uh, I'm primarily a Sheikh and Taza practitioner. Um, I've, uh, I've, koans are not my forte, although I've, I've uh, been coaxed into working with many, many of them at this point. But, um, um, but what's made Sheikh and Taza practice remain vital for me, and it's very easy for just sitting practice to go dead. Um, we can engage in it somewhat and get that nice meditative vibe going if we're experienced practitioners, and then we can just kind of coast in a kind of spacey way, right? Not really engaged. Um, in fact, if we want to talk about the things that take us out of reality, number one is thinking. I think we all know that, getting caught up in thought. Uh, the, other, the other two big categories of, of losing touch with reality are spacing out or, um, or getting groggy, allowing oneself to get groggy and, and nodding out. Um, I think these are things that happen to us all sometimes. Um, but I think in just sitting practice, it's very easy to get a little bit spacey you know, and kind of be doing it and kind of not be doing it. Um, it's really helpful for me to remember that and when I sit down I usually start with the breath and then when I'm settled, which could sometimes takes a few minutes, sometimes takes longer, then I will do the non-doing practice <coughs> that we call just sitting or Sheikh and Tasa practice. Um, but just because it's a non-doing practice doesn't mean that it's not an active non-doing. In other words, non-doing means we're not thinking. I went through a stage um, years ago now in my practice where I realized, because I was doing Shikintaza, that the thoughts had just crept in and crept in and crept in, and I realized that for a number of months I'd just been sitting down and just thinking. And I thought I was meditating because I was sitting cross-legged, <laughs> you know, and and um, therefore I just assumed I was meditating. But when I really looked at it, no, I, I wasn't, you know. And then there's another thing that can happen with just sitting. Even if we're not thinking, we can kind of be coasting along on the top of the, of the energy and kind of cruising along and not really engaged. Um, Yasutani Roshi used to say that, um, that Shikantaza should be our state of mind in Shikantaza in just sitting practice should be like when a twig snaps in the forest and the deer perks up and listens closely, right? That the deer hasn't run yet, the deer's not panicked yet, it's just plugged in. It wants to know the next, rest, next thing. That's not a, uh, that's a very um, vital form of practice. It's not just cruising along and letting the wolf come up and eat you. Um, one of the ways I sometimes describe the difference between really spacing out and, uh, and being deeply engrossed in practice, where of course we can sometimes forget the self, we can forget our surroundings, we can be so engrossed in practice, but it's not the same as spacing out. When we're deeply engrossed in practice and really paying attention, if we smelled smoke, we would jump up and we'd know how to deal with it. If you're spacing out, if you're in some kind of trance state, you smell smoke and you just sit there and burn, you know? <laughs> or someone else will take care of it, right? So, um, um, we're in just sitting practice, whether we're doing koan study, just sitting practice, mu, or working with the breath, we're interested, it's a process of inquiry, we're interested in what we see. Um, they. Um, Somebody once told me that, that Katagiri Roshi, um, who was at Minneapolis Zen Center, when he used to sit Sheikh and Taza, they'd often see a bead of sweat break out, beads of sweat break out along his upper lip. That's how, um, that's how closely he was paying attention you know, to, what was, to what was happening. 